Hi, Tim here from Proclaim AV, and today I'd like to talk about something that I see quite a bit as I work on sound systems, and that is people connecting their computer, laptop, um, smartphone with this cable or this cable. And so today I'm going to talk about why this is the incorrect way to do this and how it could even potentially damage your equipment. Let's check it out. So to understand what's going on and why we shouldn't do this, we need to understand the difference between balanced and unbalanced connections. And so here I have two types of unbalanced connection, which are um, RCA, it has one pin for the signal and then a ground sleeve. The same as this TS connection like you might use for a guitar where it has a tip and a sleeve, so that's audio signal and then ground sleeve again. Those are both unbalanced. A balanced connection, however, sends a mono signal through three wires instead of two. And two of them are audio signal, audio signal plus and minus, and then the third one is ground. So on a regular XLR connection, pins two and three are your audio signal and pin one is your ground signal. Now here's one where people get confused, and this might be part of the problem, and that is the TRS connection. Because it has a tip, a ring, and a sleeve, it can send audio plus, audio minus, and ground, and that correlates to the pins on XLR. However, this connector is also used for unbalanced stereo headphones, so left, right, and ground. Um, and so that is sometimes how things get confusing. Now, let's talk about how balanced audio works. Because it sends two signals, in the preamplifier of every mixer, in every channel, is what's called a differential amplifier. Now, what is that? Let's take a look at a definition here. A differential or difference amplifier is a two input circuit that amplifies only the difference between its two inputs. So all XLR preamps are gonna have differential amplifiers. They're expecting two audio signals. Let's look at a diagram here that might help us understand. So here in our diagram, we can see the two signals, plus and minus, and we can also see the waveforms of those signals as they come across the cable. Now you'll see that on the top one, we have the waveform and then on the plus, then on the minus, the waveform is inverted. So that makes it different than the bottom waveform. And when they come through the differential amplifier, you notice that they come out a stronger signal because it can combine the two for more output. You'll also notice a little, um, waveform there, which I've used to represent noise on the audio line or on your mic cable. So this might be because you're running too near an electrical transformer or a plug or something is making noise on your audio line. It could be radio waves or some other sort of interference. Now, once it gets there, because both of those waveforms are exactly the same, remember our differential amplifier is going to only let things through, pass through that are different between the two lines. And because they're exactly the same on plus and minus, because they were added as noise on the electrical line, then they're not gonna make it through. They're gonna get deleted as they go through the differential amplifier and you get a nice clean signal out the other side. Now, there's a second way that this is done and some microphones are wired this way. And that is that the audio signal is only sent on the plus line. The minus line is just there to collect noise 
And so that way, any noise collected will match the noise on the plus line and it will get deleted because it's identical and the differential amplifier eliminates it and only lets the difference through. In that case, you're gonna get a lower audio level coming out because you don't have the benefit of the signal doubling of the first method. However, both of these work just great in eliminating noise in a balanced connection. Now, we understand how balanced works. All of our balanced signals are going into a differential amplifier, whether that's a balanced line in or a balanced XLR mic input. However, let's look at our next diagram. At the top again, we can see how it was set up for a balanced signal where you have the mono audio in. But the problem is that when we plug in this cable with the TRS on one end and the TRS on the other end, when we plug that into a mono channel on our board and then we plug it into a stereo output from our computer, what happens is that only the difference between left and right channel makes it through. And everything that's the same on that left and right channel gets eliminated. Now we're getting rid of audio information. Now, I know some of you are looking at me going, Tim, I've done this, it works. You're right, it does, because a good stereo mix has enough difference between the left channel and the right channel for some information to make it through the differential amplifier and out to your board. But anything that's the same on both channels is getting deleted, and you're not getting the full audio that you should when you use this. Now, in some situations, and I have experienced this recently, um, what happens is it's a stereo track that you're playing back, but it was originally recorded in mono. And what they do is because there's no right waveform, they just copy the left waveform and paste it over to the right channel. And so left and right are identical audio. And then they get canceled and you get nothing. Now, some of you have experienced this and been baffled. What is going on? What is, what is wrong? I don't understand. We've got it plugged in. Why don't we have any signal? And this could be your problem. Well, how do we fix this? How do we take care of this problem? All right, very simple. Use a stereo input on your mixing board. Now, the stereo input is meant for you to send in two balanced or unbalanced. Um, left and right signals, and it knows how to sum them together. When we talk about summing, we're talking about combining left and right signals down into mono without creating a problem. Some boards will sum them together. Um, some boards are already just a stereo board, so it'll just send them to separate left-right outputs. The other way you can do this is with laptop interfaces, and I have a video about that that I will link at the end here. But suffice to say, you can put a stereo unbalanced uh, signal in one side and it will put out a properly summed mono balanced signal out the other side and then you can plug it into an XLR or a line in balanced line in connection on your board and you won't have any problems with this. Now there's one more thing that I kind of teased you with at the beginning of the video about destroying your equipment and it is this XLR to eighth inch TRS cable that we're talking about. Now, if you have a board that puts out phantom power, this can be a problem. Some of you don't know what phantom power is. We'll take a second here and explain phantom power. Phantom powering consists of a phantom circuit where direct current or DC is applied equally through the two signal lines of a balanced audio connector in modern equipment both pins two and three of an XLR connector. And so, why do we have phantom power? Well, we have phantom power so that we can power up condenser microphones that need that voltage. Some of you have condenser microphones, some of you don't. But condenser microphones require power, and by turning on phantom power, or plus 48 volts, as some of your um, consoles will list it, that'll send power out to your microphone and power it up. Now, What's the problem with that? Well, when 
you turn phantom power on for that channel, you're sending voltage down this XLR to eighth inch TRS cable. So let's look at something real quick. Here's my multimeter, it will turn on to volts. And you can see we just have some, some stray millivolts bouncing around there. I've got my gator clip plugged onto the shield pin here. Let's go ahead and clip this onto the tip of our TRS. And now you can see that we have 45.8 volts of DC power on our plug. Now, why does this matter? Well, this matters because this is a good way to fry your laptop or smartphone by sending 48 volts of DC power into the headphone jack of your device. And for people who think, well, it won't hurt things, I personally know a pro audio guy who really should know better, who fried his MacBook Pro uh, by plugging this cable exactly into his headphone jack and turned it on. And trust me, you can find other YouTubers or accounts online where people have cooked their input because your headphone jack is not a voltage input for your device. And so this is a reason not to use this cable. Now, we talked about the laptop interfaces and the good thing about a laptop interface is that that has a transformer built into it that will block that voltage from coming through. So even if you accidentally turn on phantom power on the XLR or balanced side, it won't come through because the transformer stops it and it will be safe to plug in a laptop or a smartphone or whatever you want to plug in with that eighth inch TRS. So I hope this has been a helpful video and thanks for watching.